Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. A lot has happened in July and August, but don't worry, I'm here to fill you in on all the big news from the past months in small, easy to digest chunks of information. Bulletstorm developer People Can Fly continues to grow and has become a developer that is currently working on multiple titles simultaneously. While the original studio situated in Warsaw, Poland continues to work on Outriders, an entirely new team in New York is preparing a totally new next-gen action-adventure IP. 250 people are already working for this studio, and that number will only continue to grow in the future. Video Games Deluxe, the studio that brought us the VR version of LA Noir, is currently working on a new AAA open world VR game for Rockstar Studio. Sony has started releasing games independently under the name PlayStation Indies. Shuhai Yoshida, former president of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, is now spearheading this initiative. From now on, we can expect a few indie titles being added to PlayStation Now each month. Staying on the subject of Sony, they have invested a whopping $250 million in Epic Games and, through this action, has become a minor shareholder. This means that the collaboration between both companies will only grow more intimately. Facebook has bought Ready at Dawn for an undisclosed amount of money. Ready at Dawn is more widely known for their title, The Order 1886, and has recently been focusing on making VR titles like Echo Combat or the Oculus Rift. With this new contract given by Facebook, the developer will solely focus on VR titles and is currently working on Echo Combat 2. Continuing on this trend, MMO publisher Daybreak has bought Cold Iron Studios. The developer is currently working on a persistent online shooter in the Alien universe. The German company Deck13, known for publishing CrossCode, has bought Focus Home Interactive for a staggering 7 million euros. Focus Home Interactive is better known for their work on The Surge and Lords of the Fallen. Last one, I promise. Paradox Interactive has taken over the Finnish company Icelake Studios, a logical result given their cooperative history and the creation of the survival management sim Survival the Aftermath, which is currently in early access. Some statistical news now, more than 2 million players ventured through the amazing Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a success that is partly due to Xbox's Game Pass. 21% of players actually got to the end of this awesome Metroidvania platformer. The time where reading boring stories from Dostoevsky or Victor Hugo are now officially history, at least in Polish classrooms. Starting next year, the critically acclaimed This War of Mine will be added to their repertoire. The survival game depicts realistic situations during war-torn times and already received the Culture Award from the Polish government. EA has finally heard our prayers and announced a new skate game. Development will take some time though as the game is still in early stages. Remedy Entertainment now officially confirms that Control and Alan Wake are situated in the same universe. This is apparent since both titles will be making a crossover in the AWE expansion for Control. Meanwhile, the developer is also working on yet another title situated in the same connected universe. Short news, KT Racing announced their work on the open world racing game Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. CI Games promises the same open sandbox experience in the sequel to Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts. 20 years after the original graced us with its presence, new Pokemon Snap for the Switch will have us snapping pictures of Pokemon in their natural habitat. Worms Rumble is not what we used to from a Worms game. This title will have us fighting in real time with 32 other players in either Team Deathmatch or Battle Royale. But don't fret, we can still use the Holy Hand Grenade. Alchemist Ryza will again be playing the protagonist in the RPG sequel, Atelier Ryza 2. This makes her the first character in the Atelier series to be a protagonist twice. In Vampire The Masquerade Swan Song, you'll be playing as three different vampires. This title will release on all current and next-gen consoles. Werewolf the Apocalypse Heart of the Forest is currently in development by indie studio Different Tales and will be situated in the same universe as Vampire the Masquerade. Cloud Chamber is currently working on a Bioshock title for 2K. 
This new adventure will not be situated in Rapture nor Columbia, as the developer has decided that it was time for a change of scenery. Contrary to the original, Earthlock 2 will not be a 90s style turn-based RPG, but instead be an open-world action RPG. The sequel will also be situated on a different planet, which is tidally locked to its sun. Meaning one part of the planet will be covered in eternal scorching daylight, and the other will be consumed by the cold touch of darkness. And that's it guys, you're back up to speed. If you want to see more gaming news reviews and release roundups, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. That's awesome.